So I thought that before we move on any further, because last class seemed like we were starting to whew, get into some good work, um, I thought we could kind of go back a little bit and just review some of the things as, as, a, as from my perspective as a teacher, the, the areas where at this point, I want you to really kind of focus on. Um, okay. Because I remember last class was like, whew, we really, we were really working at last class, right? Did everybody kind of walk away from that one feeling like, <laughs> I'm exhausted now, right? So yeah. the, the reason why is because learning a new language is complex. It's, it's not an easy thing to do. Um, so there's going to be moments like that where you have a class that you're just like, why did I sign up for this? <laughs> this isn't what I signed up for, you know? Uh, but it's true. Um, learning a new language, doing math, playing chess, believe it or not, playing chess. There's a, there's a few activities you can do that for your brain is the equivalent of doing lunges or push-ups at the gym for an hour. Um, so you're literally you know, pushing your brain to its limits by coming here. So it's 100% natural to have those moments every now and then. Um, a big thing, and because I went through the same experience as a Spanish student, you know, it, it can be overwhelming. Languages are complex. They're just incredibly complex. We're able to speak and communicate to each other uh, in English, but, you know, if you're like, like me, you know, I'm over 30 years old. Well, I've been doing this for a really, really, really long time, you know? And so from the language learning perspective, we've, we've taken that away from you by signing up, you know, and you're, you're now in a very early stage of communication. You're starting to understand a few different things, but you still have so much more to go. So I don't ever want, it, want you to get frustrated. Um, so I just thought it would be kind of a cool little thing to do here today, just to do a little bit of review work, check in, and then let me kind of guide you through this process of where I think you're gonna, you know, kind of get the most out of your studies going forward. For one, you know, a language is a system of communication. A communicating, Conversing is just exchanging ideas, right? And, uh, and so like when it comes to learning how to speak Spanish, if we can kind of simplify it a little bit, all you wanna do is get to the point where you can exchange information with people and be understood and also understand the other people. Now we're in class, so we wanna learn the right way to do it. So this is kind of a funny thing as a teacher, that I, I will tell you this is to try not to worry so much. Try to just loosen up and have fun with it. Um, and we're, we're in an area where we're starting to, you know, push beyond just simple phrases and vocabulary. And we're getting to a point where we're, we're having to look at the grammar, uh, which is always confusing, you know. But from my perspective, as a Spanish student myself once upon a time and as a Spanish instructor now for, I started teaching Spanish in 2005, uh, so for 15 years. Um, and before teaching like classroom classes that I really started doing in like 2012, from 2005 to 2012, I tutored people. And what that means is I went in and I looked at what they were doing in their current classes and just basically helped them fix it. And the number one culprit was vocabulary. The number one culprit, my number one recommendation for all of the students that I tutored uh, and for almost every single student that I have worked with ever since has been to spend more time studying vocabulary. You know, um, it, it's really in a, in a sense that simple. So like if I give you an example, if I walk into a restaurant and I say, hi, I'd like a table for two, please. And you know, may I have a glass of water and I think I'll start with some appetizers, maybe some chicken wings. And uh, for, for dinner, I think I'll have, I'll have a pizza. 
Like that's all very complete, lots of detail, lots of descriptions. But what do you think I would happen if I just walked into a restaurant and I said, pizza? Do you think I'll get the pizza? Maybe. Probably. <laughs> and all I did was use what? One word. You know? So you can, you can focus well, I guess what I'm trying to say is f like the m between classes, you'll do yourselves a really big favor if you focus first and foremost on vocabulary. Study your vocabulary words, study, mem you know, try to memorize your vocabulary more than anything else that you're doing with me. So, you know, almost every single class, um, I'm either going to, at some point during the class, I'll give you new vocabulary words. And oftentimes, it's like the very last few slides that I go over, we're, we're just learning new vocabulary words. So that would be one area to practice with, right? In terms of um, studying, that, that's where I would say, you know, 80% of your time should be spent on vocabulary. Build that vocabulary. Memorize those new words. Hit flashcards, uh, use Quizlet, do whatever you have to do to memorize the new words that I'm teaching you. Because without those words, you, you can't get that pizza, right? But even with just that one word, you, you just ordered your pizza. That's obviously an a oversimplification, but it's one way that I want you to think about it um, to simplify the process. Because when you start getting caught up in the grammar and the complexity of the language, that's where it starts feeling overwhelming and you start getting frustrated and it starts becoming confusing and blah, blah, blah. So vocabulary, words, work on building up your words. Um, the next thing what I want to do with you now is go into the verbs. Okay, so um, so this is kind of, we're, we're going to jump back to lesson four when I first started teaching the verbs. Can everybody see the slides that I just shared with you? Yeah. All right, so again, to try and simplify this for you, a verb is an action word. Every single, so like a conversation consists of an exchange of ideas, an exchange of information. I'm going to tell you something, you're going to process what I'm telling you, and then you're gonna turn that around and give me some information back and I have to process that. And you know, we kind of go back and forth in that exchanging of information, right? Um, so to get super, you know, most conversations are gonna uh, consist of two things. You're gonna have a question and you're gonna have an answer. Um, especially like, right now you know if you're learning how to speak if you're in this class you're just learning how to speak spanish uh anytime you speak spanish it's probably going to be with a new person and for the most part for your next 90 to 180 days all of your conversations are almost always going to be the same you're going to be asking somebody a question they're going to about themselves trying to get to know them what do you do where are you from what's your name you know those just basic introductory questions to build a relationship right so in order to do that what you have to do is to understand how to use these verbs so the verb isn't the action word every single sentence to be an official sentence in any language, as far as I know, you have to have at least two things. Um, so if I can break out my marker here, there we go. So you've got a verb. This is the primary component of any sentence. And then you also have the subject. So the verb is the primary activity. So like this question here, what is happening in this sentence? I eat burritos. What is happening? You're telling somebody what you do. Yeah, but what is that? You're eating. Action. Eat, eating, yeah. yeah. So eating, that's the, that's the action. That's the activity in this sentence. Who? I. I am the person that I'm talking about and I am the one that's eating. 
to be a complete sentence, I don't need this. It's nice to have, but I don't need it. I eat. That's a grammatically correct sentence. I eat. You eat. Grammatically correct. Burritos is just a little detail that's helping us have a more sophisticated conversation. Um, but but the primary thing that I want you to start thinking about is these verbs, okay? So in English, we don't change our verbs. Eat is almost always eat. I eat, you eat, we eat, they eat. If you notice that, eat is eat. We don't change it. That's what I'm trying to get at here. In Spanish though, this O means I just as much as this yo means I, okay? So this is where we get a little bit con confused with the verbs. Um, so if we can go on to the next slide then. So the in Spanish, as we're gonna see with this slide here, um, the verbs are gonna change a lot, right? So I eat and then you eat. So if we look at the example, the only thing that changes in English is the person right? The person is who we change in English. I eat, you eat, we eat. That's the person that's, that's performing the activity. And that's all we have to change in English. But if we look at this example here, how do you say to eat? You say comer. So just to start, this is what we call the verb infinitive that ends with that ending, ER, right? So this ER is like the equivalent of in English when we say to, right? So to eat, like eat is now like our base, C-O-M, okay? So notice here in Spanish, we've got a base, C-O-M, but then we've got these endings. So the O means I and the ES means you. All right, this is not to be confused with our nouns. I think sometimes when we see this ES, we're thinking of the plural, like our nouns, like what we saw. Uh, so how do you say marker in Spanish? Marcador. Marcador, right? Marcador. How do we make that plural? Marcadores. Marcadores. Marcadores, right? So that ends with ES, right? Not to be confused with the verb, because a marker is a thing. It's not an activity. It's not the primary focus of, of a sentence. It's just a thing. And so for things, you know, I can have one marker or I can have two markers. You can have a plural and a, the way these verbs work, and then also, like, sometimes I see this because in the I form, it ends with O. And so then we've talked about the masculine feminine thing, right? With libro or mesa. And so sometimes, like, Carla's a woman, she might say, oh, well, do I need to change como to coma because I'm a woman? No, you do not. Because the verbs don't change based off of the gender of the person. They just change off of the person person. I, you, we, he, she, it. Okay. So that's how these verbs change. Um, is this helpful? Yes. Is this clarifying some things? Okay. So the first step is to learn our subject pronoun. So the word yo means I, the word to means you. Straight 100% translation. The thing about the Spanish language is these words are optional. In Spanish, it's an option to say yo or two because the primary focus is going to be in actually manipulating the verbs and changing those verb endings based off of who is doing the action. Okay? So, the first verb type that we learn, and so this is where this is like a mathematical formula that we're trying to learn to apply to these conversations, to get you conversational. So this is like the formula that like A plus B equals C 100% of the time. 
So first we started off with an AR verb, okay? It's, it's an AR verb because it ends with AR, okay? So desear means to want or to desire. Um, that AR is like saying to that's on the end. Desear, this AR is like saying to. To say I want, we have to take away the to, right? Like we have a verb in English, to want, but we don't say I too want, we, we take away that T-O and replace it with I when we're changing the verbs in English. So we do have some little things. It's just not exactly the same as it works in Spanish. So the first step to, to becoming conversational is learning how to, to, to basically ask a question in the U form and answer it in the I form. So just to start off, to get there, we have to learn that we take away the AR ending. We've only got three types of endings for the Spanish verbs, AR, ER, or IR. All of the verbs end that way. If you think about it, it's kind of nice. Our verbs do not have that order, right? We've got the verb be, can, talk, eat, drive. We don't have anything in common with our verbs. So if you've learned how to do this in English, I guarantee you, you can do it in Spanish. Not to say it's super duper easy, and sometimes you have to kind of look at it a couple of ways a little bit differently to get there. All right, so we take away the AR ending and we get our base. So this part is always going to be there. The, whatever comes before the AR is always gonna be there. But I think what I was observing last time is that some of the students were wanting to, so like that AR ending has to be removed and then it gets replaced. And I think what I was hearing a lot with the last class is students were trying to add the endings on to the end of AR, right? So we were trying to say desearo, right? Like add that O ending there but it's, we have to remove the AR ending completely, get our base, and then we add back the endings to make the conjugations, to make the changes in the verbs. So this O over here and this I in English, so I in English is like the O in Spanish. The only thing is we put the I in front of the verb in Spanish, we're gonna attach the O to the end of the verb. Not only are we attaching it, we're replacing that two letter ending. So that AR ending goes away and then gets replaced with the O. Yo deseo, right? So the verb is desear, but we're replacing the AR with the O. Um, the U form with our AR verbs is always going to end with an AS, okay? So to say you want, you say tu deseas, okay? So we've removed the AR ending, we're adding back an AS ending, okay? Um, so you've got your base, notice in both of these, it's D-E-S-E -E is there for both of them. The AR is gone and we're replacing it with these endings that you see here. Questions about this? Is this pretty clear for everybody or? Yeah? Yeah. All right, good. Okay, so, desear, to want, yo deseo, I want, to deseas, you want. All right? Mm -hmm. So, let's practice with this a little bit. Carla, what a denar. What does it mean? To order. And how do you say I order? Um, yo ordeno and tu ordenas. Very good. All right. One last thing that I want to point out while we're over here. We've got five possible sounds in Spanish. So let's look at this word, ordenar, okay? If you learn these vowel sounds, right? O, A, A, 
O A A. That's the sounds that you want to make here. O A A. O A A. Or they not. Or they not. Okay. Look, we've changed it over here. Now we've got an O A O. Or they no. No. Or they back here we're back to the O A A. Or they not. Or they not. Spanish is all about these vowel sounds. A A E O U. A A E O U. And if we look at our example, we've got an O, an A, and an A. Or de nas. So let's keep that in mind while we're practicing with this, those vowel sounds. Okay? Tomar. Chris Bryant. Okay. Tomar. Hmm. What does that mean? All right. Good. I'm actually glad that you don't know what that means. <laughs> because that reemphasizes that reemphasizes the point that I said at the beginning. What did I say was the most important thing to the focus vocabulary. on? Vocabulary. 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 Yeah. See, a long so. week. Everything slipped in my mind today, but Tomar. So, you know, when it comes to learning vocabulary with your verbs, mm -hmm. what you want to do is isolate typically study it by the infinitive ending like this, right? So you want to get to the point where you just know without even thinking about it, tomar means to drink. Mm -hmm. To drink means tomar. They're not even two different languages. That's just two different words. Okay. Right? Just to not even, tomar isn't even Spanish. It's just another word. It means to drink, right? To drink. Yes. You okay. can drink or you can tomar, right? Like that's, ah. that's where you want to get it to, to the point where it's not even a different language. It's just a different word. Does mm -hmm. that make sense? Yes. All right. So here's the, here's the perfect point that I was trying to illustrate before. We're now working on these verb conjugations, right? This is where the confusing part comes from. But when we're changing the verbs, it doesn't matter if you don't even know what tomar means. Mm hmm Right? Yes. Because it you can conjugate it all day long, tomo, yes. tomas, right? But if you don't even if you don't know what it means, it doesn't do you any good, right? So yes. So um like your goal before you even start working on the homework in the web application or whatever it whatever you're doing for homework, mm -hmm. before you even start working on that, make sure you memorize all these words first. Okay. Before you even start trying to fill in those blanks or write something or whatever it is, make sure you know to tomar means to drink, right? Okay. Okay. So um, now that you know that it means to drink, mm -hmm. how do you say I drink. Okay. I drink is yo tomo tu tomas. Maybe it. All right. Esteban, reservar. The water, uh, to reserve. To reserve, good. How do you say I reserve? Yo reservo y yo reservas. Yes. Yeah, so tu reservas. Tu reservas. Muy bien. Tu reservas. Good. It looks like Kisa joined us, but then she disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hopefully, hopefully she'll be back. Oh, she missed the fun one too. My favorite. All right, Carla, bailar. <laughs> Bailar, que significa? Um, my favorite thing to do is to dance. Yes, all right. So how do you say I dance? Uh, yo bailo. Mm -hmm. All right, so now let me help you out with this, Carla. So we've got an A and an A. Ah. Bailo, ba bailar, bailar. So bailar. This is actually a new sound in the Spanish language. This, when you have the A and the I together, it produces what's, call, what's called a diphthong, D-I-P-T-H-O-N-G. And this is the fusion 
together of two sounds. Um, so you can kind of break it apart initially, but then you kind of fuse it together. So the, the reason why I wanted to call attention to these vowel sounds, right? This is where our pronunciation comes from. So let's, let's break it down. How do you pronounce the A in Spanish? Ah. Uh -oh. How do you pronounce the I? E. Bae. 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 Now, when you start, because of these two unique letters, when they get fused together, it turns into an I. I. Bailar. Bye. 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 And it fuses together to produce an I. So it kind of sounds like bye. Bye. Like, same as we say goodbye. Say goodbye. Goodbye. Lar. And then follow it with lar. Goodbye, lar. Goodbye, lar. That's it. That's that's Bye, the lar. pronunciation of this word. Bye, lar. Bye, lar. Bye, lar. Bye, lar. Muy bien. And All right. to buy lar. Yeah, so, sorry, let's go back. How do you say I dance? Yo, by low. To buy last. Muy bien. Okay, Chris, cocinar. Cocinar is to cook. So, yo co um, cocino to cocinas. Muy bien. Muy bien. Okay, Esteban, esquiar. Esquiar is to ski. Uh, yo esquio. Y tú esquías. Exacto. Okay. Muy bien. Um, you with us, Keisha? Yes. Hola, Keisha. Buenas noches. Hola. Buenas noches. Viajar. To travel. Very good. Yeah. Just to let you know, Keisha, I wanted to kind of jump back. We've, we've jumped back to lesson four. I wanted to review... Um, a few things with everybody tonight. Okay. For it, okay. So viajar means to travel. Very good, Keisha. How do you say I travel? Yo vio vio viaja viajo. Uh huh. So let's break it down by the vowel, right? So we've got an e, an a, and an a. E a a. That's the sound you want to make. Viajar. Viajar. Yeah. B A B A Viajo. Viajo. Good. Yes, 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 yes. All right. And so, so yo yo viajo and tu viajas. Perfecto. You got it. All right. Nice job here. All right. So let's keep it up. Let's keep practicing. Um, let's go now. Carla, number one. Yo or or didn't know. I didn't know. Uh huh. Good. All right, Chris Bryant. Tu tomas una cervezas. Oh yeah. Yo reserve reservo una mesa para dos. Keisha. Keisha's on mute, or she's frozen. Yeah, she's frozen. <laughs> all right. Uh, all right, so let's go back up to Carla then. Tu deseo postre? No, I mean, so, no, they say us. They say us, yeah. They say us. They say us. And then? Tu postre. Two by um two by las bien. Yo cocino comida mexicana. Yo esquio poco. Esquio. Esquio poco. Esquio. Mm -hmm. 
Tu vieas mucho. All right, so, so isolate those vowels, Chris. Okay. Via a. Via. Via as. Via has. Via has. Via has. Is this, so the J is the H sounding? Uh, yeah, the J produces the has from. The Spanish J produces our English H sound. Yes. Okay, so two VA has. Mm -hmm. Okay, muy bien. So, like, uh, what, what we're doing here, now we're going to go into the ER forms. So, like, uh, first focus for you, right, is get to memorizing these words. Mm -hmm. Ordenar to order, tomar to drink, reservar to reserve, desear to desire, bailar to dance, cocinar to cook, esquiar to ski, viajar to travel. You see how I did that? Like I wasn't thinking. I was just coming out, right? Yes. That's what you want to do. That's what you want to do. Before you do the homework, you want to get it to the point where, where you're studying these words to the point where it just comes out just like that. Right. If you okay. because if you get into this activity and you look at like what was the one uh, Chris that you weren't sure about? It was Tomar, right? Number two, where yes. you're like, oh, what does Tomar mean? Right. The second that you have to think. So this is fluency means not thinking. Mm -hmm. it's, it's when you're just able to talk. Nothing is impeding it. But in this situation, your thoughts are impeding it. When you have to actively think, what does tomar mean? You're not thinking about the conjugation, right? You're not thinking about the tu tomas or the yo tomo or the anything <laughs> like that. You're, you're like, what is this guy talking about? <laughs> and so you wanna get to the point where you're not thinking about that so that when you're in the live conversation, you're listening for these endings. You're listening for that AS or you're listening for that O, and that gives you the real meaning of what you're trying to say, right? In English, yes. we say, do you drink, right? And we get a lot of meaning from that do you, right? And when we say, I drink, we're getting most of the meaning from the I. We know what drink means, but the, the primary question in a conversation is who are we talking about? Mm -hmm. But when you're thinking, when you're using your brain to think about what the verb means, you can't even possibly start to think about who we're talking about. And that automatically uh, makes it very hard to actually participate in a live conversation. Okay. So is this, is this helpful? This, this kind of re? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good. All right. So now the same thing. We've got our ER verbs, the exact same thing. It ends with an ER. Okay. So comer means to eat. This two is like the ER. If you want to say I eat, just like in English, we have to take away the two, right? And then we add back an I. Okay. So when we remove this ER in Spanish, we get our base. Now we're going to move forward and we start seeing how to start conjugating these verbs. So to say I eat, we add back an O, so you get yo como. Okay? So again, we're not adding the O. We're not adding the O to comer. It's not comer o we're replacing that ER with the, with the O ending. So we get yo como, all right? To say you eat, we're replacing that ER with an ES, tu comes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we throw it on our verb chart, right? So let's go with Keisha this time, comer. What does comer mean? You're on mute. So, comar is the yo como. What does it mean first? What does it mean? To eat. To eat. Mm -hmm. So, how do you say I eat? I eat? Mm -hmm. Comer. Or, oh, yo como. Oh, you threw me off. Yo como. Say you eat. It's two comes. 
two comics, yeah. No, but that's actually good, Keisha, because that brings me to another point, right? Each one of these have very, very specific meanings. Comer has a very specific meaning, to eat. Como specifically means I eat. Come very specifically means you eat. And so like, um, if you're, if you're mixing them up, then you end up saying something that you're not trying to say. So you, you know, after you kind of like, if I, if we go back here, like these are, this is the list of the first, whatever, 10, eight, eight AR verbs, you know? So you want to get to the point where you can just say ordenar, tomar, or ordenar, like if I'm looking down the list from the beginning, to order, to drink, to reserve, to desire, to dance, to cook, to ski, to travel. Once you can do that, then you want to add it to the next level so that you can get these these conjugations together, right? So again, looking at the list, ordenar, yo ordeno, tu ordenas, tomar, yo tomo, tu toma, reservar, yo reservo, tu reservas, desear, yo deseo, tu deseas, bailar, yo bailo, tu bailas, cocinar, yo cocino, tu co cocinas. So do you see how fast I'm just kind of firing those off there? But first you get the meaning. Ordenar means to order. Then you get the conjugations, ordeno, ordenas. And it's really good to develop this as a study habit. So like, just like we're learning these verbs on the verb chart right here, you should be studying these this way and just go through it over and over and over again until you can just really drill through it that fast. Bailar, bailo, bailas, cocinar, cocino, cocinas, esquiar, esquio, esquias, e viajar, viajo, viajas. That's, that's where you get fluency because you're not, now you're not thinking about the meaning and now you're not thinking about the conjugation. Where you are right now, you should be thinking about it, right? Because you're learning, this is brand new for you. So you should be learning. But between now and next week, if you dedicate your, your concentration, like don't even open up the web application, just look at these verbs and practice changing them boom, 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 to, to get to the point where you can kind of do it quickly. And that's where you start being able to have fun with the language. All right, so de comer. Let's see here, who are we with now? Uh, Carla, beber, que significa? To drink. And how do you say I drink? Yo be bebo, tu bebes. Leer. Uh, Chris. Um, to read, and then it's um, yo leo, tu lees. Correr. Esteban. Sí. Uh, correr is to run. Yo corro, y tu corres. Corres. Bien. Muy bien. Keisha, número uno. Yo como un burrito. Dos, Carla. Tu bebes un cerveza, una cerveza. Yo leo un libro. Tu corres en el parque. Oops. No viste nada. <laughs> tu lees la revista. Yo, yo bebo jugo. Tu comes tacos. Yo cor corro cada día. Maravilloso. Okay, good, good. So you got that. That's good. Let's go over here now. So let's put it into practice, right? So let's, I want to break this down kind of one at a time for you. All right, so the first one is comes la comida mexicana mucho. Um, Where is it set at in the book so I can take notes? So we're, we're here on lesson number four in the book. Oh, okay. And this is where like, this is the the last where it all all comes into practice. So a conversation
we've got a person here that's talking and we've got a person over here that's talking and this guy says something to this guy and this guy you know so hears it right and it has to go into his head over here and he thinks about what he's hearing and he processes it and then he produces something back and now this goes into this guy's head and he thinks about it right and he processes it and then he produces something back and it comes over here so this typically comes in the way of questions and answers or a call and a response um and this is this is what a conversation truly is right so we're going to take like if we take our very first uh question here it's comes la comida mexicana mucho what's the verb comer Comer. Comer is the verb. You're right to say comer. Even though it's in the ES oh. ending, the verb is comer, which means to eat. All right. But what does this ES mean? You eat. You. you. Yeah. You eat, but because it's a question, this, just this little ES means do you. Right. And then the COM means eat okay so guess what guys none of this matters all this other stuff it doesn't matter we get our meaning just from this one word from the verb remember when i said the absolute most important part of the of any sentence is a verb and then who who does the action right so from our conversational perspective, the only thing that matters is this. Right? So we've got our question. That's the cue up here for our question. Right? And so if I draw my fancy little Spanish marks here, the question is comes. That's our real, that's the question. Tu comes. Do you eat? So like in English, if I were to say, do you eat? How would you answer that? Yes, I eat. Yes, I eat, right? So you say, I, oops. In Spanish, how do you say I eat? Como. 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 Yeah, and I was going to write the yo, but we don't even need to do that, right? So it's this little O ending. So to, to really, really drastically simplify it, right? This is the relationship that's gonna take place. With our AR verbs, you ask the question in the AS ending, you're gonna answer it with the O ending. With our ER verbs, you ask the question with the ES ending, and then your answer is gonna be with the O, okay? Here's our mathematical formula. A plus B equals C. Question, A, S equals a response of O. Does that make sense? All right. So, now we're, we've got the full thing here, which is comes. La comida mexicana mucho. Uh, come on, zoom. There we go. All right. So where I say this, the rest of this part doesn't matter. It does matter because that's the content of the question. But guess what? It just drops down here to the answer. Conversationally, the only thing that we have to change is this right so carla comes la comida mexicana mucho si sí, como la comida mexicana mucho yep so that's what i mean all this other stuff there's no changes at all 
There's no, there's absolutely no, the only change that comes here, and you've got basically two options that you can say at the beginning. You either say C or no, right? So this is our formula for, for conversation, for virtually all of these questions that we're gonna hear right now, right? Let's do another one. So number three on here is, Oops, oh, come on. There we go. K ordenas en los restaurantes mexicanos. All right, Chris. K ordenas en los restaurantes mexicanos. What's the verb? Ordenas. All right, yeah. Okay. So you see that's the AS ending. What do we change that AS ending to in the answer? Oh, oh yeah, so it's ordeno. So you um see ordeno and los restaurantes mexicanos. Yeah. So now the question here, this one's just a little bit more complex. So it's K ordenas. What do you order? Oh. So you're gonna answer with what? Ordeno. Um Tacos <laughs> in Los Restaurantes Mexicanos. Yep, ordeno los tacos. And then if you want to, you add the rest in Los Restaurantes. So you don't have to add the rest. You could just say ordeno the taco, right? Yep. Ordeno los tacos. You've answered the question, what do you order? The most simple way would just be to say ordeno los tacos. Okay. Uh, Tiene pregunta? Tiene pregunta? Hmm. How do you say I have a question? Ah, tengo. Una tengo, pregunta. tengo. Tengo pregunta. Okay. So uh, when you say, if I say uh, no, uh, uh, come on. La comida mexicana. Do you have to say no and no? Like no, no como. Yeah, technically there should be two no's. Okay. And to we have two no's as well. So like if our question is do you order blah blah blah? Do you order tacos? And you want to say no, I do not. So here in English, we also have two no's. This is our first no. This is our second no. We just use two different words and we use an auxiliary verb. Conversationally, it would also just suffice to say no. That's all you really have to say to communicate. Ordenas los tacos? No. <laughs> That's all you have to say. You just gave a 100% valid answer, right? But technic, so like you could say no, no ordeno los tacos, or you could just say no ordeno los tacos. It, it kind of depends on your intonation and the inflection in your voice when you, when you answer it. Um, but yeah, I mean like the full complete sentence to say no would be to say no. If you wanted to, you could say, yo, no ordeno. And so if I, if I were to drag this over here, do you see that direct comparison there? No, no ordeno. No, I do not. They're, they're directly corresponding with each other in that situation. Okay. So you need, just like in English, we need the do not directly before the verb that we use. No, I do not order. We have that do not immediately before the verb. So in a negative sentence, again, you also need the no immediately before the verb. Good question. So now, like if I were to ask another one of these questions from this list here, um, so we'll go with Esteban. Ding, ding, ding. A veces 
tomas cerveza, cerveza, cerveza con la comida. And I'm kind of doing this on the whiteboard just to call it and stuff, right? So Esteban, what's the verb? A veces tomas cerveza con la comida? Tomas, to drink or tomar. Exactly, very good. So now what do we do with that in the answer? Uh, tomo. All right, so Esteban, uh, answer the question. A veces tomas cerveza con la comida? Sí, a veces tomo cerveza con la comida. Good. All right. Tomo cerveza con la comida. All right, let's go with Keisha now. For example, all right. Prefieres. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Isha, prefieres tomar una margarita o una cerveza? This one, I'm kind of, this one's a little bit more complex. There's two verbs. What's, what's the primary verb? Tomar. Hmm. It's actually preferir. Mm. So preferir this is the verb that we're going to be changing. Where we get the most of our meaning um, is just that initial verb. Do you prefer? Yes, I prefer or no, I prefer. Everything else is complimentary, right? All this stuff is going to go down there just like it is. But the, the conversational light bulb that has to go off for this conversation has to take place is with the, with the conjugated verb preferir. So the verb infinitive is preferir, to prefer. It's in the ES ending, so we know it's do you prefer. And then to answer, we change that ES to an O. So it, so it would be prefiero tomar. Prefiero, margarita. prefiero tomar. But would the tomar change to the O or would it stay the AR if you're talking about yourself, you're using the yo. So, yo prefiero tom tomo un margarita. All right, so um, good question, Chris. So just like it is in the question, are we saying prefieres tomas? No. No, we're not. We're saying do you Prefer, what does tomar translate to? Drink. Drink. No. To drink. To drink. To drink. Oh, yeah. Okay. To drink. To drink. Okay. That's what I mean. These, all of these oh. words, these different forms, they have very precise meanings. It doesn't mean drink. It means to drink. To drink. Okay. I see. What I just now did I see. It. It. Now do you see the importance? So yes. tomar, this A-R, directly corresponds to the two, right? Mm. So if the question is, do you prefer to drink? The answer would be, I prefer, again, to drink, right? Mm -hmm. So we're going to say, how do you say I prefer? Prefero. Prefiero. 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 And then how do you say Tomar. Tomar. Yep. Boom, boom, boom. And then whatever else you want to say after that. But the primary changes are coming here with that, that mm -hmm. preferir verb that's the conjugated one. So we, you know, we don't change our verbs in English. The way these, the, the, we've got an AR, an O, and an AS ending here. You know, we don't do that in English. We just change the person. But also, like when we have this verb infinitive, to drink, you can see how it's structured there. We, 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 change, we do change the first one. I prefer, you prefer, I prefer. We're changing the I for a you, or in the question, what do you to an I, right? But then that second verb comes in the infinitive form, to drink. And so typically, whenever, because there are sentences that will be a little bit more complex that have multiple verbs kind of stacked on in a row, you conjugate the first one, 
and then you leave the rest rest of the verbs alone. Okay. Okay, so is this this pretty helpful today? Yes. Yes. Yeah, very much. Very. Nice little review. Okay, good. Yes. All right. Um, cool. Now let's go on. Where are my lessons? All right, so that was kind of the, where we first started introducing you to these words in the fourth lesson. And then, and like, so you kind of missed it at the beginning, Keisha, but that's where, you know, like this stuff, the nouns, the adjectives, all this stuff is going to kind of fall into place over time. But now that we've gotten into the verbs, this is where the fun also starts to happen. This is, this is where all the confusion starts to happen, but it's also where all the fun starts to happen when you learn how to work with these verbs on the fly, right? So all this other stuff that we've learned, it's important, but um the most important thing is memorizing the meaning for these verbs and then learning how to without thinking about it change them on the fly okay so now this is the this is the next part of the verbs so let's go back through this again okay so um carla ordenar que significa to order okay i order yo or they know. Bien, you order. And to or deny. Chris, tomar. Tomar is to, um, to, to, to drink. That's the one. Okay, <laughs> I got it now. So, yo tom, tomo to Tomas. Reservar, Esteban. Let's see. Re, uh, yo reservo. Uh, e to reservas to reserve. Muy bien. Keisha, bailar. To dance. Muy bien. How do you say I dance? Yo bailo. Mm -hmm. And then to bailas. Mm -hmm. And it's more of a bai, bailas. Bailas. All right, let's go, Carla, cocinar. Othenar to um uh, to to cook. Yo coseno to cosenas. Chris, esquiar. Esquiar is to ski. So yo esquio to esquias. Bien viajar Esteban. Viajar to travel. Yo viajo to viajas. Muy bien. Desear, Keisha. To want or to desire. So yo deseo, de, yo deseo, and to deseas. To eat. Yo como to comas. Comes. Comes. Lier. Read. Yo leo to leas. Beber to drink. Yo bebo y tu bebes. And then Korea is to run. So yo coro and tu cores. Muy bien, vamos a practicar, okay? Keisha, ask Carla, número uno. Ordenas jugo de naranja con el desayuno. They say you know. They say you know. See, 
ordenó Hugo de Naranja, no, Naranja con el deseo uno. Muy bien. Carla, dos a, a Chris. Okay. Tomás, Tomás, café por la mañana. Sí, tomo café por la mañana. Um, okay. ¿Reservas una mesa normalmente? Sí, reservo una mesa normalmente. Uh, ¿Bailas en el discoteca? Sí, bailo en la discoteca. ¿Cocinas comida mexicana? Sí, cocino comido, comida mexicana. Esquia, esquias mucho durante el in, en vieno? No, yo no esquía mucho durante el invierno. Okay. Ooh, I got that out. <laughs> You're doing Viha. good now. This is it. This is great. Mm -hmm. Viajas por Sudamérica. Uh, sí, viajo por Sudamérica. Uh, ¿Qué deseas beber hoy? No. No deseo. No deseo beba hoy. So this one is actually saying, what? What do you want to drink today? Oh, what do I want to drink? Could just be a water, you know. Um, what do I want to drink? Yo deseo beber el vino. <laughs> okay. Did I say that right? See? So babe, so I would say because beber is beber is not the primary verb, it stays the same. Exactly. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. You're saying I want to drink. Beber means to drink. Yo deseo beber. Okay. Um comes comida cubana mucho. Si como comida cubana mucho. Sí. Cuentos vasos de agua bebes generalmente? Cuántos. So how much? Yeah, how many cups of water? Oh, do you drink every day? Um, um, let me see. Be um, vejo, vejo. Ocho de agua bebes. What what's the verb here, Chris? Baby. Is um cuantos, how many? That is not, Wait, a no, that's not the verb. The action is the drink is so the be no bebes. Yep, yep, yep. Continue that thought. There you go. Bebes. Oh, bebo. So yo bebo ocho va vasos de agua. Good. Okay, less un bien libros ora. Uh, si leo un bien is it? It's not bien. What is that? Buen 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 libro. So that was read a good book. Mm -hmm. uh, Cores fuera. O en el gimnasio. Okay. Por o. Fiera o. En el gimnasio. Bien. All right. Now, the next most important part is to be able to start making your own questions. That's what a conversation is. It's just, you know, asking lots of questions and you know, there's been, <laughs> it's kind of, if you study like human behavior and psychology and stuff, one of my favorite books that I've, I've read of all times is 
I don't know if anybody here has ever read this book, How to Win Friends and Influence People. In that book and in hundreds of other books that have come out since then, um, there's a really interesting concept about conversation, about making people like you. Um, it's generally agreed upon that the best conversationalists are not the ones that spend most of the time talking, but the ones that drive the conversation, the ones that know how to make the questions to keep the conversation moving. I don't know if you've ever had an experience where like you walked away, you just met somebody new and you just walked away and you're like, man, that was like an amazing conversation. I enjoyed, I enjoyed talking to that guy. And then you start thinking about it and you're like, wait a second, I have no idea what he does for work, where he lives, what he does, what he, because you spent the whole time talking. You enjoyed talking to him so much because he was asking you all the questions. <laughs> and psychologically speaking, people like talking about themselves. So, um, the trick to getting, if we apply that same concept here to, to learning how to speak our new language, to become really good at speaking Spanish, you want to get really good at asking questions. Okay? So how do you ask a question with beber? Beba, bebes. Bebes, yeah. So this is the part where we want to get to the point where it's quick. How do you say, do you drink with tomar? To Tomas. Tomas? Yeah, say it with a question. Tomas? How do you say, do you order? Ordenas. Ordenas? Uh huh. How do you say, do you want? Deseas. Deseas. Yes. Now you're making your own question. That's all it is. That's all this is. It's, it's that simple. We were talking at the beginning of the class, you know. Languages are incredibly complex. So you look at this activity, right? Oh my gosh, we got bebida, refresco, vino, trago, jugo, all these different words. The only thing that really matters is that verb. To, to help you simplify this, the only thing that matters is you can take that verb, ordenar, and change it into do you order. Ordena, el café. And then you throw in any of these other things here. Eh, Chris, ordenas la cerveza. Esteban, deseas los tragos. Eh, Keisha, tomas el café. Eh, Carla, bebes el jugo de naranja. Like I'm just firing these questions off because I've, I've created these connections. What you as the students do at this point is you need to study this, this part of the conversation, right? So this part right here at the bottom this is the interaction of our question. If we really hone in on that, and then our answer, right? So noticing kind of the dynamic that takes place. This all comes from this verb, right? Beber, to drink, that's what we get our meaning from. But being able to manipulate that verb in a conversation based off of who is doing what. Right? So our question is, do you drink? Yes, I drink. Do you order? Yes, I order. Do you want? Yes, I want. All the other stuff is just descriptive details that helps us, but the key to the conversation comes right here. Does that make sense? All right, let's go. Uh, Carla to Chris, number one. Bebo, Bebo, El Hugo de Nar... So you want to ask him a question? A uh, baby, is that right? Yeah, babes, babes, el jugo de naranja. Yo bebo el jugo de naranja. Naranja. <laughs> okay. But so, I so. have a question. Does Go he ahead. have to? Yeah. Does he have to say the yo? Because isn't the bebo, um, I drink? He does not have to say the yo. All right, so let's take this here. Let me clear up all this stuff here, right? So if we were to look at all this conversationally, right? So the question is bebes. The answer is going to be bebo. If the question over here is 
Thomas, the answer is going to be Como. If the question is Ordenas, oops, the answer is going to be Ordeno. If the question is Deseas, the answer is going to be Deseo. Um, Keisha, what you're referring to is the subject pronoun the I or the you. And so if I write over here, let's see here. So you're asking the question, do I need to say yo Babel or do I just say Babel? The, the real answer is either way. Both work. Okay. Um, because of the way Spanish changes with these endings, the yo becomes, in a sense, redundant. It is not necessary to say yo. You can say it. It's 100% grammatically correct. It's 100% acceptable. It's 100% optional. The, the key to the conversation comes with these endings, changing the ER to an O or to an ES, right? Mm -hmm. Changing the Tomar to an O or an AS, right? That's where we get the true bulk of the meaning from. If you feel comfortable, if you feel more comfortable saying tu bebes, then say tu bebes. If you feel comfortable just saying bebes, then just say bebes. And just know that it's 100% the same thing. Optional. Sometimes it's helpful initially to say tu bebes just because the way English works, we say you drink, right? Do you drink? But because that, that ES on the end literally means you, um, tu, literally means you you know if we really wanted to get uh what's the right word for it simple we don't need these endings you could i could come up to you and say esteban tu beber coffee <laughs> tu, tu beber cafe i didn't say tu bebes but i've gotten the meaning from the two so you know what i'm trying to say but the more correct thing is to actually use that ending, the ES ending, that's more important. But again, the grammar, you know, this stuff is good because I know it was confusing a lot of you last week, um, which is why I wanted to re review it with you. But like in my simple example at the beginning of the class, if I walk into that restaurant and say pizza, I'd be willing to bet anybody here a hundred dollars I'm getting a pizza before I leave. If that's all I know how to say is walk in and say pizza, right? Um, if you, can, you don't have to speak grammatically correct if a conversation is the exchange of ideas. If I walk in here and I say, tu tomar cerveza, right? I understand what you're trying to ask me. You didn't say it right. You said it in, in, incorrectly, but I understood it. And guess what? I'm going to give you a beer. Good job. You got your beer. <laughs> But you do want to you want to pay attention to this to to be able to get to the point where you're conversing and and sounding good and feeling confident. All right, let's go on to the next one. Chris, numero dos to Esteban. Um, El Hugo de Menzana. So you you gotta ask what what's he doing with the or, with the apple juice? Oh, I didn't give him a verb. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a little too simple. That's a little too simple. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> to to um Tomas um El Hugo de Manzana. Si tomo El Hugo de Manzana. Uh, Kisha. 
uh, Babies El Café. What was the verb you used again? I'm sorry, Babies, right? Babies, sí. So Babies El Café. Uh, sí, Bebo El Café. Um, Carla? Mm -hmm. Um, de deseas la leche? No, no, deseo la leche. <laughs> <laughs> I know my lactose intolerance for that. <laughs> <laughs> Um, um, is it Chris? Yeah. Um, ordena, ordena, ordenas el agua? Si, sí, ordeno el agua. Um, let me see. Los frescos. Um, Tomas um, los fres refrescos. Uh, sí, tomo los refrescos. Uh, Kisha, des ¿deseas la cerveza? No, no deseo la cerveza. Cerveza, la cerveza, no. <laughs> no, <laughs> you don't want no beer. <laughs> um, deseo el vino. <laughs> sí. <laughs> sí. Well, uh, let me re ask you then, Carla. Okay, yeah, no. okay. Because <laughs> I was saying, I want some wine. <laughs> <laughs> Carla. You know what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> Carla, des deseas el vino? Si deseo el vino. Mucho. <laughs> All right, number nine. Oh, oh. Um, um, orden, orden, ordenas los tregos? Los tregos. Los tregos uh, significa. Yeah, significa cocktails. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what do you, uh, ask me again. Ordenas los tregos? Si, sí, ordeno los tregos. Um, let me see, el ron. That's rum, right? Indeed, yes. Yeah, rum. Um, um, de, de, um, de seres el ron. Uh, sí, deseo el ron. Muy bien, muy bien. All right, let's do one more round of these, okay? Mm -hmm. Oops. All right, good. So same thing here, right? Comer. So the question would be, comes? The answer would be, como? Ordenar. Question would be, do you order? Ordenas? Yes, I order. Ordeno. Do you want? Deseas? I want. Deseo. Do you cook? Cocinas? Yeah, I cook. Cocino. So go ahead, Chris to Esteban. So Esteban Deseano. 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 That was, um, que significa Deseano? Isn't that breakfast? Is that breakfast? Desayuno. Si, sí, senor. Okay. So, um, Um, Cocines um, el desano. Desayuno. Desayuno. Sí, uh, cocino el des desayuno. Uh, Kisha, uh, ordenas el almuerzo? Sí, ordeno el um, you, um Years old. No, el um you years old. Um you years old. Um, Did I say that right? Um, mm -hmm. 
Um, where is all? Okay. Um, Carla. Um, decias, 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 Lacina. Uh, como, como se dice Lacina? Dinner. Uh, que significa la cena? Dinner. Que significa dinner. la cena? Dinner. Oh, dinner. dinner. And uh, si uh, deseo la cena. Mm -hmm. um, comes los huevos? Sí, como los huevos, huevos. Um, el arroz. Um, is rice. Um, co co um, tu, 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 tu. cociner um, el arroz. So how do you say, do you cook? Oh. Cocinas. Co oh, co yeah, cocinas, yeah. Cocinas. El arroz, al arroz, arroz. You have to roll the R, so arroz. 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 Si, cocino el arroz. Uh, comes la carne? Mm, um, si, como la carne. Carla? Um, comes la fruta? Si, sí, como la fruta. Um, de, uh, orden, oh no, I wanna. Cocinas el pollo? Si cocinó el pollo. Um, ordenar um, las verduras. Uh, si sí, ordenó las verduras. Uh, deseo, deseas el pescado. ¿Qué significa pescado? Uh, el pescado, fish. Uh. Uh, what was that again, Esteban? De I'm sorry. Deseas? Deseas. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Not today. No, I'm just teasing. No. De <laughs> <laughs> no deseo el pescado. All right. Nice job, everybody. We're going to wrap things up here tonight. How, was this helpful? How helpful was this? Yeah, very helpful. Very helpful. It's very nice, appreciated. It's nice to um, look. You probably read did my homework and was like, "Oh God, we need to review." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I haven't even looked at homework in a week. Um, super bad um, homework. No, but. this is this is very helpful. I think sometimes it goes so fast mm -hmm. that. Um, the review is nice because I, for me, when I'm when I'm answering the questions, I, it's I like to know what I'm saying. Yeah. Well, instead, of, instead of making sure, I mean, of course, you want to say it right, but I'd like to know what I'm saying too. It, oh, if that of makes course, sense. Absolutely. If you don't know what you're talking about, then that's not going to be a good conversation either. Yeah. You know? But um, it's. It, this is not like a super duper simple thing that you're doing, you know, this is in terms of everything that's out there. Um, this is one of the harder things to do. This is why most people in the United States of America are not bilingual. We don't have a real need to be and people don't, you know, do it. I've been, you know, I do this now because I I struggled with this. I was you 20 years ago. Hmm. People don't believe me because I teach it. I'm fluent, blah, 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 whatever. Spanish was hard for me. Spanish was so hard for me. 
Mm -hmm. I've had night, like I can't tell you how many nights of like frustratingly just something that I wanted so bad that just did not come to me very easily. I did not have, you know, teachers that tried to make it easy. My, you know, my college program, are you kidding me? Everything that we've done so far was just one day of class. Mm. <laughs> like, seriously, it was, it was so intense, you know? And I was drowning. I was drowning. If anybody ever wants to get this book I wrote, Five, uh, Five Easy Steps to Speak Spanish with Confidence. I talk a lot about my story. Let me show it to you just so you see. Mm -hmm. This book, I wrote this book. It's on Amazon, Five Easy Steps to Speak Spanish with Confidence. Um, but I mean, I, this, is, this has a lot of my story in it of, of becoming fluent in Spanish. And I'm only fluent in Spanish because I'm really stubborn. <laughs> I, just, I do not give up. I just, I kept going back. I kept going back. I kept going back. I just, I was set and determined on it, you know? But along the way, like, because it was so hard for me, I had to teach myself all these tricks, you know, like when I say focus on vocabulary, that comes from a very genuine place in a couple of circumstances of one when I was like, I had just taken two years of high school Spanish, couldn't speak a word of Spanish. So I decided the only way to learn how to speak Spanish was to get on a plane and go to Spain. And I did that and I didn't speak any Spanish and it was a terrible experience. It was so like I would walk into restaurants and just do that to order my food. I didn't even say pizza. I just, <laughs> I got the menu and I would just point to something. And so I was in Barcelona, it's right on the coast and they eat a lot of seafood. And I absolutely love seafood, like if I know the full life story of that fish, I, I really enjoy it, but I'm very sensitive about, I'm very scared of like food poisoning. And so I do not, like I really have to un have a deep understanding of where that food's coming from. Um, I did this on one of those occasions and they brought me out a plate of raw octopus. It wasn't even cooked. It wasn't even cooked. It was disgusting. <laughs> I, I spoke so little Spanish that I couldn't do anything about it other than to, you know, take my money out, pay the bill, get up, leave. I was so embarrassed and just literally walked to the restaurant that was not next door. <laughs> and then I found something that said sandwich. And I was like, oh, that's that's got to be a sandwich, right? So I just pointed to the sandwich and I got my little <laughs> ham and cheese sandwich. And then, so like, I realized like, if I don't start learning food, how to order food, I'm never going to eat while I'm here. I'm hungry. I like eating. And I kept, I kept having all these terrible restaurant experiences, you know, food I couldn't eat. So like that, build up your vocabulary you know i say that from a very genuine place i lived that where i literally walked into restaurants and could not talk to people and i got my food you know it, it it i paid for a lot of food i couldn't eat until i figured out like i better learn how to start saying you know steak in spanish you know because i like eating steak and not raw octopus so um that comes from a very real place and then the next place uh, was when I when I when I came back from that trip, I enrolled at CU Boulder. I was taking night classes there, and um, it was so intense. It was so fast. I mean, you'd get, you know, from Tuesday to Thursday, we would complete a, a complete lesson in this academic text test. Like we've barely even touched all the verb conjugations. We've only touched the the U and the I form. There's there's five forms. And in my Spanish class, I learned the European Spanish. So I learned the six forms. So all this, if, if you're struggling with this you and I stuff, this tu comes, yo como, we've got a lot more of these to come. So that's why I really want to drill this point home to you now. And I wanted to go back and review because we're about ready to start looking at the third version, the, the he and the she form. So we're going to learn another change. Um, 
but I got so frustrated with that. Like it was like within a couple of weeks, we were in the present tense, then the past tense, then the future. And it was just moving so fast. And I, again, I found myself in this point of frustration where I, I wasn't getting it. And so I just, again, I, I took a step back and I was like, I'm just going to, I'm just going to work on these words. Like what I did in Spain, I'm going to start, I'm going to apply that same concept to this class. And I started studying the lesson ahead. So I got to the point where I memorized all the, you know, I, I realized like that was the key. I had to memorize those words. And then I took it the next step forward. So I started looking at the next week's lesson and trying to memorize the vocab. So I was, I was already like, uh, just the vocabulary, the grammar I left alone. It was just the vocabulary words. I would go through the lesson, take out all the words I didn't understand. I had a stack of flashcards. I memorized those things 10 minutes in the morning, 10 minutes at lunch, and 10 minutes at night. Memorized those vocabulary words. And all of a sudden, I started showing up in class and being the smartest one in the class. And I understood everything that the teacher was saying. And I was able to participate because I understood everything that she was saying. And the grammar and stuff, like she was hell-bent on teaching us all these verb conjugations, past, present, future, blah, blah, blah. I paid almost no attention to that. I just focused on memorizing those words. And I just started crushing it after that. Ever since I, I, I developed that habit of memorizing the words, first and foremost, before doing my homework, the homework became easy. As soon, you know, there, there's this point where initially, like the first couple of weeks of class, and if you have the book, you're probably doing this right now. If you have the web app, you're doing something similar. So you're going through, you're trying to fill out, but then you get here and you're like, Pratica, oh my God, what does that mean? Go back through here and you try and you start looking for the word. Oh, that's what that means. And you flip back and you have your notebook over here and the book over here and you're flipping through. And But if you just memorize what all the stuff means, you don't have to do all that. You just understand it and then you do it. And it's it like, it takes a little bit of extra work initially, putting that initial focus and memorizing vocabulary, but then you end up saving yourself a ton of time because you're not looking words up anymore. You're just, it's there, it's all there. So vocabulary and then work on like, if you do want to study that kind of conversational relationship between the verbs, comer, yo como, tu comes, like work on those conjugations so you can start drilling through those and that'll help wonders for you. I've been doing this for a really long time. The students that do that do really well. The students that don't do it, sometimes they have success and sometimes they don't. But I do know one very, very, very strong thing is that the students that focus on memorizing that vocabulary before they do anything else are the ones that get it 100% of the time. Okay. Yep. And you guys can, you're always welcome to contact me out of class or whatever. And, you know, if we get to a point where it's like, whoa, we're moving too fast. I mean, from, from my class, from last week's class, you know, I felt like it was, it was a lot. So I wanted to kind of come back and, mm -hmm. and kind of re-explain some of the dynamics. And there's no shame in repeating stuff. And, you know, it's like, I don't know, sometimes I work with students that are like, no, I gotta get to the next thing and I can't repeat because we already did that. We gotta move to the next thing. Learning a language is all about repetition. All about repetition. Who has kids here? Yeah. It, it's it. just a nonstop <laughs> process of correcting them over and over and over and over again until they get it. My son, I try to speak Spanish with him. His dominant language now is English, but I like, he's not getting the verb conjugation. So I'll like, I'll ask him like just this morning for breakfast, you know, I was like, quieres fruta? Do you want fruit? You know, and he'll answer me back. See, sí, quieres fruta? So he doesn't change the, the O ending on it, you know, but he's communicating, you know, and I correct him. And I say, no, 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 you say quiero fruta. And then he says, okay, si, sí, papa, quiero fruta. And, and we, you know, but it's just a con constant correcting him, correcting him. And that's all it is. It's it's going back and repeating things and correcting them, and eventually you get it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right, guys. Happy uh, whatever today is Wednesday. Mm -hmm. uh, 
goodness, <laughs> few few more days. By this time next week, maybe we have a new country. Go vote. <laughs> <laughs> So, because I know that you said there's another book. I, we wanted to get the book so that we would have it before we started. Could you okay. send us that information, the name of it, so we can order it? Yeah, so I guess this is the book. This is the next level up. It's That's called it. Let's Start Talking. Espanol. I can, I can put a little chat in the... Um, okay. Give me one second here. Is that this one? Uh -uh. That's the one now. Yeah, that's the current book. Now. That's the current book. There's another okay. book after this. I'm going to okay. share with you. This first link is this book, The Five Easy Steps. It's a super simple read. Um, it does have some real practical and actionable steps in it. And you're going to see like everything, literally, I spell it out for you, if, you know, um, that will help you out a lot. And then... This should be, this next link is the second book. Sit. Good boy. So yeah, if you wanna click on those links and get that opened up. Excellent, thank you. Okay, um, well that's it for me tonight. See you guys right. next week. Hasta luego. Hasta right. luego. Happy voting. Happy voting, yes. Yes. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs>